Today, I want to talk about some drama in between a recent dispute with the Core Boot Project and the laptop vendor Malibol, with initial complaint by Malibol, a laptop company that published a blog post right in front of us here called Don't Support the Core Boot Project. So what happened here? We're going to break things down and get into some of the back and forth here. It's quite amazing to see some of the frustrations here, including claims of cost delays and unhelpful interactions with Core Boot, specifically consulting firms that discourage Malibol from implementing it into their systems. So with a title here that says, why do so few companies offer Core Boot on laptops after a 15 month journey to port Core Boot to our own? We discovered firsthand the challenges and it wasn't what we expected. Recent post on October 18th, although this has been updated multiple times, we're gonna get back to the updates here in a moment, but I wanna break down a few of the claims here and talk about some of the challenges by Malibol. So reiterating the above, and starting with experience, however, was nothing like we anticipated. Instead of supporting collaboration, we faced inflated prices, poor communication, and what we perceived as incompetence from core boot leaders and consultants. Quite some shade being thrown from the Malibol team, at least on this blog post. Our efforts ultimately fell apart, not due to technical challenges, but because of what we see as unethical practices within the core boot community. The article details our interactions with three different core boot contributors, two consultants, and one leader. We're sharing our experience to expose the issues we faced and to question why it is so difficult to adopt open source firmware. Now, we're not going to go through all of this blog, but I will post the link in the description below so you can check it out yourself. But we're going to go through some of the key things here. First off, the prices were outrageous, 50K to 100K per board. And they blame a person here named Christian for being, well, seemingly unprofessional, but claim that they're writing emails like a 12 year old would on their phone and claimed that he had a habit of sitting us down, repeatedly trying to put us in our place and set us straight when we were just trying to debug code. I guess this is the level of service you get for $300 an hour in Germany. It's a little wild how they're extending some of the shade over to countries as well. Not sure what that had to do with anything. But anyways, it goes more on to explain why it was such a bad time using Christian as a consultant. Explains that the communication style here and the attitude that they were getting really seeming to fuel the issues here. They keep going into explaining how Christian and another person named Max, who are apparently working full-time on trying to help him with implementing Core Boot, the article keeps outlining Malibol's frustration with that 15-month-long journey on trying to port Core Boot to its laptops, highlighting multiple negative experiences with Core Boot and Core Boot consultants. As you see here, they started working with another Core Boot consultant after having a lot of trouble with Christian and Max, so they thought maybe there would be a way to reconcile this whole deal and actually get Core Boot on. Start talking about how 3M Deb tries to market itself as a champion of free and open source software by highlighting its values on their site. But what open source really seems to be about is for them to extract all the value from other people's code and repackaging it under its own brand and charging a small fortune. So another blow to another company by Malibol. And they even go into raising price, strategy, ethical concerns, claiming that 3M Deb we're creating artificial barriers, misaligning with open source principles, profit over progress, lack of transparency, potential conflict of interest, discouraging customization. And it's interesting that now we are in the second round of consultants. To me, it seems like we're having a hard time vetting these consultants, even if they had a poor experience. I'm not sure how they got so far down this rabbit hole. Clearly there's gotta be poor communication on both sides and a lack of checkup on the progress. We're gonna actually move on to towards the end of this, and I definitely wanna read this, but before I do, make sure to smash that like button because this one is a wild one. But apparently that wasn't enough for them to debug open source code for one of the main projects they are contributors to. Does this seem real to you? Because I'm still wondering if I dreamed all of this. Due to the experience with 3 Deb, we banned the entire country of Poland for life, which really sounds like a broad reaction and to me comes off a little unfair, especially because it's the actions of a single company. It does not represent the entire country of Poland. Penalizing all Polish users from one negative experience is just a weird alienating way to respond to an incident. Not sure why that was a response, but that isn't the first or last wild response here. We're gonna continue on with the next complaint. The next complaint here goes, dives deeper into reaching out to the core boot leadership team to see if they could do anything to help resolve the issues that they were having with their consultants. Now, I assume the issue here is that Coreboot is saying that these consultants do work on Coreboot, 
and maybe are even recommended by Core Boot, although I haven't found that anywhere. Let's just, for argument's sake, say that Core Boot is suggesting these consultants. Well, it's still not Core Boot's fault or responsibility to keep them compliant. At least they really don't have control and can't dictate what consultants can or cannot do. So a bit of a weird strategy, but they actually got a deal from another Core Boot leader, Matt, who replied, and we actually came to an agreement for him to help us complete the porting. Needless to say, we are very excited by the fact of Matt agreeing to work with us. But this one seemingly falls through as well. Mr. Chromebox, Matt is the type of person who will suck your will to live out of you and leave you for dead. Nice guy. He embodies every trait that you would never want in someone you hire for a job. He's unprofessional, unreliable, untrustworthy, irresponsible, and incompetent. This is the third time that Malibal is throwing someone under the bus for the supposed non-work of people and consultants for this core boot porting over to their laptops. I'm not getting too far into this because there's a lot of rambling here about how people would be better off if they did stuff a certain way and whatnot. But here's what happens at the end of this. Well, due to this experience with Matt, we banned the entire state of Maryland for life. You can't make this up. While I understand the company's frustration with the high fees, the poor communication, and perceived unethical behaviors from these consultants and project leaders, I don't think they get much of a point across making blog posts like this and dissing everybody. And there's more to read, including a closing here. Basically, they're saying in the six months that we try to work with these core boot developers, they didn't write or debug a single line of code. Is that believable? No, it's not. And for the record, in all of our correspondence, the core boot team, we never called anyone a monkey or implied that they were one. Nor did we make overly condescending remarks or insinuations. We use that sort of tone in this article to simply illustrate a point. I'm not sure if the point is getting across here, but... If we would have said something to the effect of we felt the experience was unsatisfactory and thought that they could have done a better job. And that might have been a better way to approach this whole thing by simply stating that. And while I understand the reason to highlight this type of interaction, it will be interesting to hear the other side of things. So we're going to get into that. But just to kind of summarize some of my thoughts on this, it does seem unusual or at least telling when a company repeatedly has issues with multiple partners or different teams across different locations. There might be a sign of a deeper issue with the company itself. It's not very common that a reputable company would blacklist entire states or countries due to disputes that they've had with individuals or teams or consultants, what have you. This approach just seems to reflect poorly. It seems wild and unnecessary. And I think that speaks pretty strongly on the professional practices and adaptability here of the company creating a blog post like this. Anyways, that aside, let's keep going. As I still understand the frustration here from Malibu, let's talk about the other side, Coreboot. So first off, what is Coreboot for those of you that don't know? Coreboot is an extended firmware platform that delivers a lightning fast and secure boot experience on modern computer systems and on embedded systems. As an open source project, it provides audibility and maximum control over technology. So basically, its initiative is aimed to replacing proprietary BIOS firmware found on most computers so that it can so it can help open source and create a better way to initialize hardware like CPU, RAM, and storage quickly and efficiently. And the three main goals are speed, security, and customizability. The System76 team is actually implemented in some of their laptops. I believe Purism as well. And even Lenovo has experimented with Core Boot. There's two updates from Malibal that we're going to get into. But first, the response to the blog post from Malibal from Core Boot. This one's fairly short and sweet. Recently, there was a blog by Malibal, a disgruntled laptop vendor who attempted to port Core Boot to their rebranded white label laptop. The cause of the kerfuffle they describe is what they failed in their own attempt to port Core Boot to their laptop, then approached a few of our consultants and community members claiming that it was that the code was 80 plus percent done and that they just needed help debugging. Each attempt terminated in evaluation phase. However, as consultants and vendor disagreed on the, the amount of remaining effort and supplied hardware had problems, including flash, write problems, UART access barely possible, which could not be resolved easily. Additionally, the person's attitude and communication style was, to put it mildly, very off-putting. We won't do a point-by-point -point rebuttal of the screed since others have already refuted it in various forms, such as the Reddit thread and a YouTube video. There are several places where the vendor linked to their blog and for obvious reasons, they got severely ratioed. Again, an, again, a lot of shade 
being thrown around. It is important to emphasize that the contact with that laptop vendor was terminated early in the process aside from NDAs that are common for new product development. No contracts or statements of work were signed and no money changed hands, which is very important. And they've highlighted here in this post from Core Boot. Any suggestion from this vendor's blog that a Core Boot consultant failed to deliver on work they were hired to pay to do is false and defamatory. Well, that's just wild. So what YouTube video are they talking about? Well, I am going to link this one. This is from Brody Robertson, a fantastic breakdown of this whole drama and how things unfolded here. Definitely worth a watch. It is a 40 minute video. So if you wanna spend some time really diving deep here, Brody does a wonderful job. Speaking about Brody, I'll be on his tech podcast called Tech Over T very soon here. You won't wanna miss that, so subscribe below. Let's get into perhaps some of the wildest stuff that came out of this whole entire back and forth by going back to Malibal. Okay, so this article was updated two more times. In this first update, basically, it is claimed that if there was a success with this, they planned on improving Core Boot's documentation to make it easier for other companies to port Core Boot as well. The claim here is that the three Core Boot developers not only prevented us from offering open source firmware, but also hindered potential improvements to the Core Boot ecosystem. Kind of just to point back how extensive of an issue and how broad of a reach that this issue between the two has now caused. Anyways, but update two is where I'm going to end this. Update two, System76's principal engineer decided to chime in and make a fool of himself, so we banned the entire state of Colorado for life. So out of all of this, what did we get? Well, Malibol is claiming that Core Boot's consultants are no good, the leadership no good, and has banned two states in a country all after this six month journey of trying to port in Core Boot. Well, I'm gonna end it there, but I do wanna know what your thoughts on this whole debacle are. Leave them in the comments section below. Do you think this whole thing was fairly approached? Did it really warrant for the complete ban of a couple states in a country? Clearly there are high tensions among these two. Do you think they'll be able to work it out? Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.